there are some tanks that have an almost mythical status, and the German Tiger heavy tank is a perfect example. The Tiger wasn't horrible by any means, but since World War II, its performance has been heavily exaggerated. A lot of people have started to counter this idea, so I'm going to try to focus on some of the more pervasive myths I've seen recently. But before we get into it, I want to talk about my sponsor. I'm partnered with Apex Gaming. They make pre-built PCs. If you're looking to upgrade, you should check them out. Link is in the description and comments. You can use my username as a discount code on checkout. Now back to the video. Of course, there is the idea that the Tiger was basically invincible. Not in a literal sense, mind you. Just incredibly difficult to kill. When most people say this, they're referring to the early war period, but some claim it to be true even later in the war, such as a certain Battlefield game, for example. No, Tigers were not running out of ammo before they could be killed. If they were, it would probably be due to Germany's poor logistic situation. Anyway, the Tiger's durability is often highly exaggerated. A lot of it comes from it being hyped up by American press later in the war, though I imagine it also comes from the Battle of Kursk, where one Tiger took an insane number of hits. The Tiger's armor wasn't amazing. It honestly wasn't that much better than the armor some medium tanks had at that time. The Tiger's main advantage was being able to outrange its opponents. This is why it often worked so well on the Eastern Front, where the terrain was usually flat and open. It also had relatively thick side armor, which allowed it to angle in some circumstances, thereby increasing effective armor thickness. Now, real life isn't War Thunder, so I imagine that angling wasn't useful very often, but it is worth mentioning. I think when people make these statements, they're comparing two tanks in a vacuum, say a 75M4 versus a Tiger head-on. In that scenario, things look pretty bleak for the Allies, but tanks were not the only vehicles rocking around. In 1943, a number of Tigers were destroyed at the Battle of El Guitar, where they fought M10 tank destroyers. Out to 1200 yards, the M10 could go through the front of a Tiger, as it had a 76mm gun. So while the M4 wouldn't get a 76 until later, there were vehicles that could counter Tigers. While 75 Shermans and 76 T-34s would struggle against the Tiger's front, the side was easier to deal with. In the case of M4s at least, they dealt with Tigers pretty handily before Normandy. In Sicily, one M4 even knocked out three Tigers. Later on in the war, things got even worse for the Tiger. The proliferation of vehicles like the M26 Pershing, M36, T-34 85s, 76 M4s, and various Soviet casemates meant that the Tiger was very far from invulnerable. However, that doesn't mean the Tiger wasn't a capable vehicle. When it comes to the effectiveness of a vehicle, what usually matters most is the quality of the crew, the assets supporting the tank, and honestly just dumb luck. Not necessarily how powerful a vehicle is. Obviously, as technology advances, that changes a bit, but it's a pretty good rule of thumb. Moving on, there's a running joke that German tanks have really bad transmissions, with the Tiger being targeted often. As far as I can tell, the transmission wasn't unreliable per se, it was just incredibly difficult to maintain and repair in the field, and had to be taken to specialized repair shops away from the front. Also, if the driver wasn't skilled enough, he could damage the transmission, so that probably contributed as well. I think people might be conflating the Tiger with the Panther on this one, but even so, it wasn't necessarily the transmission that was bad on the Panther, it was the final drives. I guess they could count as part of the transmission, but still. And finally, a myth that is fairly pervasive but not countered often. It's often said that when the Tiger showed up, it single-handedly spurred development of upgunned allied tanks. Tanks like the 76 M4s and T-3045. In both of these cases, the Tiger was not a huge factor in their development. In fact, the Army started making a 76M4 in August of 1942, the same month the Tiger started production, and long before they would encounter one in combat. In the case of the T-34, the Soviets encountered the Tiger pretty early on, but while they were impressed by it, they didn't believe it could be serviced in quantities large enough to make a difference. The 76M4 was delivered prior to the invasion of Normandy, but it wasn't used during the invasion itself. Why? Because most units thought the 75 was fine. That changed when the Panthers showed up in greater numbers. The T-34 story is similar. After the Battle of Kursk, where the Panther was encountered for the first time, the Soviets began upgunning their T-34s. So if anything, it was the Panther that had an effect, not the Tiger. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.